what is going on my friends thanks for stopping by again so let's do a drive and talk uh, we just got into Tennessee headed north on 65 and I thought we'd talk about high tops a lot of people ask me do you regret not getting a high top no I don't regret it um, you know it's just uh, it's kind of hard to find a high top in this condition that's almost new and low miles for the budget that I had Wow, this gimbal is tracking the curves of the road. It'll straighten up, don't worry. And uh, every high top that I looked at that was just, you know, a couple years old and low miles, it's like 30 grand. And the new ones were like close to 40. And that was just too much. I had a top dollar of 20 grand. And you can find these Chevy Express vans that U-Haul has turned in every day for about 20 grand. And they're going to be about a year old and they're going to have less than 15,000 miles on. Did you see that hawk just fly down in the median and get that mouse? I think it was a mouse. Wow. But yeah, I would love to have a high top. But, um, you know, I'd also love to have more freedom. So life is a trade-off, and uh, it's just so much easier to find a, get you a Ford Econo line or a Chevy Express or GMC Savannah. They're everywhere, and they last a long time. They're tried and they're true. Parts are everywhere, but uh, we still don't know about the longevity of the Ram Promaster. Ford Transit seems to be a good van, but 40 grand? I don't think so. Um, that, you know, I could go get a high top tomorrow if I wanted it. Because, you know, I've been working full time since I've been living in this van for about two years, haven't paid rent, saving, hardcore saving. I could go get any high top I wanted tomorrow. But if I did that, it would put me way back on actually being able to uh, semi-retire early and hit the road and adventure and all that. So it's not worth it to me. I would rather have the freedom and adventure in a standard top van than have to stay and work a couple more years living in a high top van. So yeah, I would rather keep the savings very happy with the Matty Wagon. Um, it's the kind of van you're not afraid to get in and just go across the country. Um, I've had it two years and I put on about 20,000 miles. Most of that was on my trip to Colorado back in the summer. That was a big chunk of that, I mean. This gimbal is funny how it'll track the road. It'll lean into the curves. And then once we straighten up, it straightens up. But this is a pretty countryside through here. We're way south of Nashville. Yeah, I mean, my two cents would be um, if you've got a budget like most of us do, just go with a standard top van, you know. Uh, you don't have to be special and get a high top. You can make it just fine a standard top. It's much easier to get on the roof and... Uh, attach your solar panels and it's just get into uh, places out in the national forest that you can't get into a high top. I found that out when I was out there out west that you go into these national forests and the little road going in has a lot of limbs hanging over the roadway with a little gravel dirt pig trail. And I personally saw high tops that could not get down into places that I could get into because the limbs were just not high enough off the ground for the van to get in there. So 
you got to think about everything, you know. Like, what's more important to you? The experience? Or the material possession? That's your choice. There's no wrong answer. Okay, let's see where we are. Lewisburg, Tennessee exit. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where I am. So I had a good visit with my father. Would like to have had a few more days, but I got to get back to work tomorrow. My plan is to, uh, I'll be back in Nashville in about an hour. And I gotta go grocery shopping. I haven't run my fridge this whole week because, you know, I just put everything in my father's fridge. Just give it a break for a while. And uh, this week I have more solar coming in, 200 watt panels, another controller. I will affix it to the roof the same way I did last time with the industrial Velcro. It's worked out great. I think uh, now that I've done it once, this next time won't be such a chore. I'm going to go ahead and have my measurements laid out. My bottom side Velcro already attached to the roof. So when the panels come in, I'll know exactly where to stick the top side Velcro. And it should be a matter of just sticking it up there and pressing it down. Uh, I'll run the wires through that hole that's already cut out right above the tail light. And last time it took me several hours to do it. This time I think I can get it all done in about an hour and a half. And uh, I'm going to have a great system then. That is a perfect balance. 400 watts of solar, 250 amp hour of deep cycle AGM batteries. Great balance. And uh, let's answer a few more questions that I have gotten recently. And that's about the refrigerator. When it's running, it's using about three and a half amps. It runs for about 10 minutes and shuts off for about 30. So, you know, that's not even putting a dent in the batteries. It, it doesn't bother them a bit, even with just the 200 watts. But summer comes, that's going to change. So I want to go ahead and get prepared now. Because springtime, when I'm out on the road, you know, I want to be ready have to have any roadside additions where you're having to install solar but right now I have a controlled environment at work where I can install the panels and uh, I'm sorry I got distracted just trying to uh, pay attention to the road signs So back to answering questions and comments. I'm keeping the AC in the back, even though I gave my generator to my dad because uh, I could get a campsite with electrical and plug the AC in in the summertime. So I'd still like to keep it, just in case. Running the AC is great. I just don't like doing it from the generator. Generator's noisy. You have to carry gas around and oil around all that but I could uh, run my extension cord out run my AC in the van no one was even though it's running not that it would matter but you know even at night you know with the generator you've got to shut it off at 
9 o'clock at night before you go stealth park. Anyway. So that answers that question. Let's see what other question we had to answer. Oh, yeah, have I been married? On the last video when I showed you my old house, I was married when I lived in that house. And after I got divorced, I lived there, kept the house about another year before I decided to sell it. Uh, I'm just lucky she didn't sue me for the equity. But we had a very amicable divorce, so it was pretty much just a business transaction at the end. And uh, we worked out a deal where we split the money in the bank, and I kept the house, and she got just about everything in it. And uh, it worked out really, really smooth, really. Married for almost seven years, lived in that house, almost ten, I think. Yeah, life was not very good the last uh, five years in that house. Not very good at all. So I... The memories there, it's not like I went back to reminisce of the good old times. There were good times there, but they weren't great. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess uh, this is a marathon rambling. Let's wrap it up. Take care. Be well. Smash the bell.